Today we have the opportunity and the pleasure to speak with Representative Rosemary Swanger, who has represented the 102nd House District, which includes portions of Lebanon County, having served from 2007 through 2014. Good morning again, and thank you for joining us today. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. I'd like for you to start off and briefly discuss uh, your early life and growing up within Lebanon County and um, the influences you had that uh, played a role in your uh, career as a public servant. Okay. Well, I was born and raised in Lebanon County. My father was a building contractor. My mother was a homemaker until I was in ninth grade, and then she went to beautician school and uh, became a hairdresser. And uh, I graduated from South Lebanon High School. Then I went to Thompson Institute and studied the legal secretarial course, thinking I would like to work in a law office because the law always interested me. And I even thought maybe in the future I would like to go to law school, become an attorney. That, that never happened. <laughs> After I uh, left Thompson Institute, I got married, and a year later had our daughter, my only daughter. And uh, when she was about, I think it was 11 months old, I went to work for the city of Lebanon in the mayor's office. My title was clerk stenographer, but I was actually secretary to the mayor, the city clerk, and the development coordinator. So that piqued my interest in government. However, at that point, I used to say, I love working in the government, but I hate politics. Because <laughs> I didn't understand it. Okay, I just saw, you know, the, the sometimes uh, convoluted, <laughs> uh, you know, results of what happened in the, uh, the uh, internal meetings, and I didn't understand how those uh, decisions were made. But talk about an influence, uh, the mayor of the city of Lebanon, who was then John Worlow, Jack Worlow, was a big influence on me. What a marvelous person. He was educated at Yale University, and he was uh, the most brilliant man I knew at the time, probably one of the most brilliant yet. Uh, and uh, he taught me a lot about government, about compromise, about negotiation. Uh, and uh, he sparked my interest in running for office. After the mayor left and, an, and uh, uh, another mayor succeeded him, the city clerk left his position. That was the chief administrative officer of the city of Lebanon. And he left his position. I had been promoted to assistant city clerk. And the new mayor, who was, would you believe, Walter Swanger, <laughs> but no relation to, to me. He was a distant cousin of my husband's late grandfather. I didn't even know the man before he was elected, but he decided to promote me to city clerk. And then I became, I had added responsibilities after a little while, and I became city clerk personnel officer. But it was amusing in that when people would call for the mayor and I answered the phone, they thought, some thought I was his wife, others thought I was his daughter. You know, of course, you can only get positions like that if you're related to them. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I wasn't related in any way. But I served in that position f uh, with, with the city for 18 years. And then in 1983, an opportunity arose to run for elective office when both Republican county commissioners stepped down at the same time and the position was wide open. So I was on the ballot with, uh, I think there were a total of nine Republican candidates in the primary and four Democratic candidates and I was fortunate to be a high vote getter in that, in that uh, race, even though I was number seven on the ballot. Now what we did, and I had a wonderful a committee of my friends, we knew nothing about running an election, <laughs> but we must have done some things right. We covered everything. We covered radio, television, newspapers, uh, you know, we, we had campaign posters, we had small billboards, we had everything. And to play up my ballot position, I used a little logo with the green seven and like seven up with the red dot, but I put a red rose there. And, that, and I kept everything that I sent out or every advertisement that I, that I uh, put out there, I put that little logo on so uh, people knew where to find me. But like I say, I was a high vote getter and uh, served as county commissioner for 20 years. I retired in 1984 and thought I would be retired for basically the rest of my life doing some volunteer work or whatever. And then in 2005, we had the middle of the night pay raise. And uh, 
not only did that disturb me, <laughs> anger me, I should say, but also before that, we had this stadium bill and many people in Lebanon County were opposed to putting tax dollars into sports stadiums. Right. And we also had the pension increase. And uh, for those three issues, I really, you know, based my campaign on that against the 14-year incumbent. And um, I know the one mailing we put out was very effective. It, it had a baseball player on the front, you know, mm. batting a ball. And it said, and an umpire, and it said, three strikes and you're out. And then we played up the three votes that he made for all those three issues that I just uh, mentioned. So, uh, you know, it's been a great career. Uh, I, I, m most of all, you know, I have done some things legislatively, but most of all, I enjoy my constituent service in my office. Let's talk a little bit more about the difference in running for a local office and a state office. Yes. Uh, you said you use some of the similar tactics. And that, that were successful, yes. uh, but it, people don't realize how hard it is to run against an, an established incumbent. It is very hard, yes. It, I think it's less than, what, 2% or something that you can uns unseat an, an incumbent. But because of that issue, that middle of the night pay raise, which he voted for, and the clean sweep movement, which was very uh, effective, you know, and that was headed by Russ Diamond, who in fact is voting to succeed me, in this position and he's the candidate that I'm supporting because I feel that without his efforts uh, I would never have had the chance to serve I I as a legislator. Um, something you mentioned to me before we got on camera is that you also ran without the endorsement of your local Republican committee. I did. And they ran someone against you in each of the uh, elections that you ended up winning. Yes. Uh, how was that tough to run against? I don't think it was because um, I had the experience, had the knowledge, I had the relationship with the, with the voters. They knew me from when I was um, city clerk because the meetings of city council were televised by the local cable company. So uh, they came into every meeting and I sat at the table and read all the ordinances, resolutions, the communications and took the minutes of the meeting and um, at one point we had a very uh, contentious relationship on city council even though they, they were all, all Republicans there was a split of three to two and uh, they used to get rather lively and in fact I'm surprised it didn't uh, result in fisticuffs at, <laughs> <laughs> at some point but it never did but there was a lot of heated exchange between them and when I went door to door when I first ran for county commissioner people recognized me they knew who I was and I know a lot of people told me well you look like the only sane person sitting at that table <laughs> so it was good voter you know voter recognition name recognition that's very important when you run any campaign for public office. Well, you brought up your district. Describe the 102nd district. Uh, mm -hmm. Includes portions of Lebanon County, but also the geography, the demographics, the industry. Uh, what's what's surely? The main well, the main industry is agriculture. Yet, but there's a lot of warehousing developing in my district. In fact, in the area where I now live, uh, which is close to Indian Town Gap. Uh, there is a, uh, a meeting of Interstates 81 and 78, and it's very, very uh, attractive to people, you know, to the trucking industry. And um, but as I said, the main the main um, industry is agriculture. A lot of uh, chicken farms in my area, a lot of dairy farms. Uh, most of most of the um, area I represent is rural in nature. Uh, I have the largest land area in Lebanon County, but I have, of course, equal, almost equal population with the uh, representative who serves in the 101st District. And she represents the city of Lebanon and Palmyra and Anvil and, you know, north and south Londonderry and Mount Gretton and, and north Cornwall, which is where most of the population is concentrated. What types of... Uh issues do constituents in your district most often bring to your attention? Well the number one issue and it was it was the number one issue when I campaigned for office back in 2006 it remains the number one issue today and that is school property tax. School property taxes are in my opinion and the opinion of my resident uh, constituents 
they're uh, out of control. I mean, um, I am going to, my husband and I are planning to move to Tennessee to retire. We took a vacation in a, a beautiful retirement community, which we loved. And in fact, we're about to close a deal on a house uh, next month. And those taxes, total taxes, property taxes, will be $880 a year. Here in Lebanon County, we are paying over $6,000 a year. I mean, the difference is just remarkable. And the home prices are lower. The uh, cost of living is lower. The sales tax is higher. But, um, you know, you can choose there how much you want to buy, you know, and what you need to buy. Hmm. What special projects or, or grants or things have you brought back to the district? And what solutions to problems have you brought back to the okay. district? Okay. Well, I think my number one um, accomplishment, I feel anyway, is um, getting some RCAP money for the Good Samaritan Hospital. They are planning a state-of-the-art cancer treatment center, a one-stop shop, so to speak, where people will not have to be going to Hershey or Philadelphia or Baltimore or any place else to get um, top, uh, you know, the latest treatment in any type of cancer. I uh, feel very, very, um, very grateful to the governor who approved that money, and um, you know that is that is a project that is on its way. But another thing that I did, and this is also health related, is I got the effort started in the house to restrict the use of tanning beds to uh, teenage uh, to only 17 years and older, and 17 year olds have to have parental permission. But they, we found, and this uh, I was approached by the Hershey Medical Center melanoma division plus my sister-in-law who is a melanoma survivor and uh, they educated me. I, before that I didn't know how dangerous tanning beds were and they told me how they see more and more malignant melanoma in young women especially and it's killing young women and um, I led the effort to um, keep the teenagers out of tanning beds which I feel very good about. Well, let's backtrack out just a little bit mm -hmm. and talk about your first experience in Harrisburg. Yes. Coming to your first swearing-in day. Yes. What do you remember of that day and the subsequent ones thereafter? How was it similar or different? I was just in awe. You know, I couldn't believe I was really serving this beautiful building. I mean, you, you, there's just no comparison to the, the, the lovely building that we get to work in. Um, I was really, uh, you know, eager to dig in there and get things accomplished. And uh, I guess I learned pretty quick how hard that is. <laughs> It's, it's not very easy, <laughs> but you have to persevere, you know, you just have to keep at it. Um, and, uh, you know, um, I've, I've accomplished some, some things that I'm, I'm really proud of. I'd mentioned a couple, but another thing is one of the um, townships in my district was left out of any money from uh, the slots machines, even though 27 acres of uh, Penn National Race Course and the new casino was located in that township. They didn't have any of the casino floor in the township, but I got as uh, serving on the gaming committee, and that was a big advantage to me. I got uh, some money, um, some money, yeah, money and some language put into the new uh, bill that that instituted ta table games. And this township then uh, was a, had about $250,000 a year available to them for their budget, which was a big boost. And um, I told them after, after I was successful in getting the money, I hope they're good to the fire company <laughs> because the fire company in that township works very hard. They don't have a social club. So, you know, they do uh, ham and chicken dinners and barbecues and sub sales and all those kinds of activities, which is just running the volunteers ragged at this point. You know, most of them are, are getting up in age and they uh, just can no longer do it. So um, they did increase their contribution to the fire company. That's, that's one thing we didn't really touch on talking about the district is all the functions that you have to do in your, when you're not here in Harrisburg. Yes. Uh, talk about the difference of working here in the capital doing legislative business, but also doing all of the things in the district that are required of you. Yes. Well, in the districts, there are, of course, a lot of meetings, uh, a lot of uh, dinners that, I'm, that you get invited to. But the thing I do most in the district is work at the computer, work at my computer, and open and respond to email. 
Uh, that takes up a lot of my day. And uh, of course, I have staff to help me, two, two staff there and one in Harrisburg. And they do divide it up between us, and we, we color code them so we know whose is what. But uh, that, that does take up a lot of time. But I also take any phone call that comes into the office. If anyone wants to speak to me directly, I will take that phone call. I will sit down uh, and meet with anyone or any group or any individual who wants to who wants a one-on-one -on -one meeting with me. Never refused anybody that that opportunity. So it do, it does take a lot of time uh, in the office. I mean, I spend really I think I spend more time uh, in a day in the district than sometimes I spend up here in Harrisburg. Did you have anyone when you first started to sort of help you along, either as a a member who was a mentor to you that kind of show you how the process works from being a freshman member. Oh yes, yes. Jerry Stern had that responsibility and uh, he was so helpful. He came uh, to my office right off the bat and said, you know, well, here I am, uh, and you have any questions, you know, let me know. He reached out to me and was most helpful and so was uh, the other representative in Lebanon County, Mara Gingrich. She helped me a lot too. And everybody was so willing to help, you know. And I was I was really surprised at that because I had defeated an incumbent. I mean, it was one of their friends. He was here for 14 years, but it doesn't matter. They they don't hold that against you, you know. I mean, their attitude is, hey, you won fair and square, and now you're one of us, and we're here to help you. So it was really uh, really great. Another part of the legislative process is the committee part. Yes. Could you talk a little bit about your committee assignments over the course of your terms and? Uh, how that uh, how that role affected what you either done legislatively, um, or how that affects the legislation that gets passed here. Of course, yes. Well, I think I started out on the Aging and Older Adults Committee, the Children and Youth Committee, and the Veterans and Military Affairs Committees. I had three when I started. Um, now I, I now have four uh, added. I don't I don't have children and youth anymore, but I have gaming and I have local government. That. Uh, is very important in the process because that determines what bills actually move out to be considered on the floor. They are first voted in the committee and if they are voted out of committee then they go to the appropriations committee, the finance committee, and then they're eligible to be put on the calendar. Of course, uh, coming out of committee, the uh, majority chair is very important in that this person decides which legislation we're going to be considering in the committee meeting. And then after it gets to the point where it could go to the floor, the speaker and the majority leader are the two people who decide uh, what's going to be on the calendar at any one point. You sponsored a lot of legislation while you were here. Yes. Talk about the process of actually getting a bill passed how tough it is as a prime sponsor to take an idea and try to get uh, it through the system. Well, I did very well in the House. I did very well in the House. I had a number of bills that I, that I was prime sponsor, and they moved through the House. But unfortunately, call it uh, freshman stupidity. When I was running, I made issue of the stadium bill, okay, and, and that I didn't think we should be putting tax dollars into stadiums. Unbeknownst to me, one of the leaders in the Senate was uh, in the process of getting money and building a stadium in his district. And in his opinion, I came out gunning for him. He took it very seriously. I didn't even know, you know, who was behind the stadium at that point. And it wasn't my intention to be personal in that opinion, but he took it personal. And to this date, I've never had a bill passed. Uh, and become law because they always stall in the Senate. They're either given to uh, to members of the Senate or they don't go anywhere at all. So, but you know, there are other ways to get things done. Uh, I mean, I have uh, co-sponsored legislation and uh, work to get other other things accomplished. I have added amendments to many bills to make them better. I have asked other members and other other of my uh, colleagues to. Uh, be prime sponsor on a bill that I felt very uh, adamant about, and that way, you know, I've got I've gotten a lot of things done. And to me, it's it's not really important to have my name on a bill. You know, uh, that it's just you know get it done, and I don't care who gets credit. <laughs> what are some of the tougher votes that you've had to make while you were here? There are a lot of big issues that 
are currently on the table that mm -hmm. have been passed over the last <clears throat> four terms. What are some of the ones that you remember more distinctly? Well, uh, when Governor Rendell was in office, I never voted for any of, of the budgets that he introduced. I thought, uh, you know, that we spent beyond our means and um, and borrowed beyond our means. So I never, never voted for one of those budgets. Uh, I have voted for all of Governor Corbett's budgets because I think he's very cost conscious and, in fact, has uh, in one of his budgets he actually decreased spending from one year to the next. And um, I think the biggest or toughest vote I had to make was for the. Um, I'm at, a, I'm at a blank now. The tax on Marcellus Shale, ex, not the extraction tax, but it was the impact tax, sorry. Yeah. The impact tax, yes. Um, I had a lot of people in my district saying, um, don't vote for it. They didn't think there were enough um, uh, controls put on the drilling process. Uh, they, they were um, in fear of uh, harm to the environment. But uh, I researched it and I felt that it was not the best bill, but it was a good bill, and it was something that I could support. And I'm glad I did, because there was a lot of money going back to local governments to protect our environment. And, uh, you know, uh, it's there if, uh, if, God forbid, any kind of, uh, you know, a, a spill or anything like that would occur. Uh, we have the money there to uh, take care of it. You came in on a wave of reform. A lot of new members came in during uh, that year that you were elected. Right. The House has enacted some reforms since then in response to that. Have you, what are your thoughts about the reforms that have already been acted to changes in the House rules? And do you think they have gone far enough? Well, yes and no. Um, we, the very first thing we did when I came into office was to put an end to session uh, at 11 p.m. Before that, there could there's virtually no end. I mean, these sessions sometimes went all night and into the morning, and uh, I guess it was a way for leadership to uh, convince the members to vote the way they wanted them to because people just got so tired and just wanted to go get some sleep, you know. But uh, luckily, that, that hasn't happened. We can uh, extend session by majority vote. And I think I only recall one time when we did that, and I don't even recall the issue offhand. But we did go till around 1, 1 a.m., 1, 1.30, uh, on a very important matter that we needed to get done. So, uh, you know, but that was the only time I remember. Um, and um, other than that, reforms, I'm sure we made many, um, many, not as many as, as we would like, but we're still working on that. I have, I, I am a, a member of the Reform Caucus, and we're working on some issues that we'd like to get done. Uh, hopefully, they'll do that next session. I won't be here, but uh, you know, we're, I'm still part of that process to decide what we'd like to get done and how we're going to go about it. Why is the time right now for you to leave? The, house? the time right now is partly because of my age, um, and uh, because. I think it's just time for me to spend more time with my family. My husband would like to travel again in this job. We didn't have many opportunities to take a lot of time off. Um, while I was um, retired from my county position for three years, we had I think four timeshare weeks and we virtually went on a vacation like every three months. You know, we, we used all four of those weeks. Um, in this position, I'm lucky if we get to take one week, and we usually do it toward the end of August, right before session starts again in September. But uh, yeah, it'll be nice to, to do some more traveling and uh, move to a warmer climate. Uh, we're planning, I don't know if I mentioned Tennessee, but that's where we're planning to go. And uh, I'm looking forward to that. It's a, it's a home on a lake with a dock. Uh, right in our backyard. Sounds wonderful. It does sound wonderful. Does I'm, I might take up fishing, <laughs> you know, and we plan to get a uh, a uh, pontoon boat and you know go out and uh, do some sailing on the lake. Could you describe the the way media and technology has affected the way you've done your job here at the house, either positively or negatively? Yes, well, um, I think for the most part, media has been 
fair in what I have done. Uh, I have uh, submitted a lot of op-eds to our local newspaper and letters to the editor uh, to get uh, some information out to the, to the public. Um, I have, of course, my Facebook, which my, my staff helps me to monitor. Um, I have, uh, you know, uh, I, I, I can't really complain about anything that uh, the media has taken an issue on as far as I'm concerned. I mean, uh, there were differences of opinion and those were brought out in the media and that's fine. I think we should, we should have all sides of the story before, you know, a decision is made and there's nothing wrong with that. You've advocated a lot for women and women's issues yes. over the years. Uh, why was that such a, an important topic for you? Well, as a woman, you know, I, I of course, am, am very interested in um, mentoring other women, um, making sure that, um, that things are f done fairly in, in a lot of different areas, um, and that they have the opportunities that uh, anyone else would have. So yeah, I, I've uh, meant, uh, advocated for many women's issues over the years. You look at the composition of the house, it's still majority male over yes, female. Yes, yes. What types of things could you advocate for or get young women interested in the realm of politics? How would you go about encouraging them to either run for office or just get involved within the political process? Well, I certainly would encourage anybody to run for office and I think it's important that you start with local, local office first. You know, get your name out there. Uh, let people see what you stand for. Um, you know, it, it's pretty tough if you're an unknown in even in you know your home district if people don't really know who you are, what you do, to start and run for state or federal office. That's that's really tough to do. But uh, and serve on boards and commissions and get involved with uh, service clubs like you know Kiwanis and and uh, Sertoma whatever, uh, you know, just uh, get yourself out there, um, serve if you're uh, a businesswoman, you know, become a member of the Chamber of Commerce and attend those functions. So yeah, and I, I really would encourage women to get involved. Now it's, it's, I must admit it's pretty tough if you're a young woman with young children, especially if you come from Erie. <laughs> Right. Or way up in the northeast corner, you know, and you have a really long way to, to come to Harrisburg and, you know, have to stay here for three or four days out of the week. That's tough, but if you have a spouse who's willing to shoulder some responsibility there, and a number of the young women do, you know, and, and they make it work. So it's not impossible. Looking back over the course of your career, what are some of the things you've enjoyed most about serving as a House member? I've enjoyed making friends with my colleagues. Uh, I, there are some really neat people uh, in the House of Representatives, both parties, and I'm going to miss them because we've developed friendships, we've worked together, and we've gone to functions together, so I'm going to miss that. Um, I'm going to miss um, the, how should I say, the, I'm going to miss the frustration. I'm going, to, I'm going to miss the process, you know, the give and take, the negotiations, uh, the work in, the, in caucus. I didn't mention caucus. Caucus is where you uh, learn about all sides of an issue. I mean, and, and if you don't know everything about legislation that's coming up on the floor, then that's on you because in caucus, you, we have staff that reviews everything we're going to consider and you get a, a chance to express your opinion, you get a chance to ask questions, you know, so it, it's really, I think that's the most valuable part of this job, really, is what you do, what you do and what you learn in caucus. Do you have any regrets or disappointments that you're leaving behind? Regrets or disappointments? Well, my biggest regret is that we couldn't get property tax eliminated, school property tax. I mean, we're trying to do something on that for, I can go back to when I was city clerk, like 40 years ago, you know, 30, 40 years ago, that was an issue. And we still haven't been able to get anything. We've tried various measures that haven't really done much at all. I mean, we were, I think, led to believe that when, uh, tape, when gambling was instituted, slots were instituted, that there would be substantial money going to property tax relief. 
Well, that's like third on the list of what's funded, and when we get the, the leftovers, which hasn't been much at all. I mean, I know in my district, if you get eighty to a hundred dollars taken off a four to five thousand dollar bill, you know, and then the next year they're increased again, and you lose that savings. So it's just a, a big issue that is really hurting people in my district not only the seniors and retired people but the young families who are trying to buy a house oftentimes their property tax bill which is built into the mortgage is more than their actual mortgage and they can't afford they can't afford the monthly payments so that's why so many young people are still living in rent and just don't aren't able to buy homes what have you learned about either the politics or or the people of Pennsylvania the people of Pennsylvania well, I've learned that the people living around Philadelphia and Pittsburgh and those suburbs think a lot differently than the people in the central part of Pennsylvania, where I come from. Um, they, of course, uh, tend to be more of the Democratic Party, most of those people, and uh, more liberal than we are on many issues. And it's difficult, some, and, and, and property tax is one of those issues. People in those larger s uh, cities and suburbs don't seem to feel that it's a problem but in the rural areas where we have people of lesser income it is a problem so and that goes you know spreads across so many other issues that we deal with like uh, gun control people in the big cities where there's a lot of um, you know crime involving guns they want stricter controls on guns we in the, in the, uh, the agricultural parts of the of the state feel that we need to have guns for our protection and that we are actually uh, decreasing the amount of crime because we are armed. If criminals knew that we didn't have guns, it would be like a free-for-all, you know, they, they would certainly have the advantage. I'm glad you brought up those topics because there's still a lot of large topics on the table. We haven't uh, right. found a solution to liquor privatization or there's still uh, issues with Marcella Shale. Uh, Pension. Pensions. Pensions, the, yeah. It's the large transportation bill that was very much needed. Right. Um, with those still out there, does a part of you wish you're still here to find a solution or you're happy just to get out now? <laughs> I'm ready to leave. <laughs> I'm ready to leave. You know. Are I, there solutions eminent for those types of issues? I hope so because, you know, a lot of people, uh, retirees especially from state state government and from the school districts they feel that the proposal on the table now that the governor is supporting and that uh, representative Tobash has put out there feel that we're trying we're trying to take away and reduce their pension that is not so we never have had any in inkling any desire to take away from people who are already retired or even to change the pension plan for people who are working now you know, the, the goal is to change it for newly hired people so that it won't be such a drain on the taxpayers because we just can't afford a defined benefit program going far into the future. The money's going to run out. And if it continues, people are going to have to be paying pensions from the general fund of the state of Pennsylvania. And that's going to be a horrendous, uh, you know, horrendous problem if that happens. So you want to try to uh, minimize the bleed, so to speak, by changing it for new employees going forward. My last question, how would you like your political career as a House member to be remembered? I would like it to be remembered as a servant to the people. I would like people to, um, to be of the opinion that I worked for them and tried to solve problems, not, not only on the local level, but also on the state level and also that I hired, hired the best staff any legislator could ever have. Here in Harrisburg and my two in Lebanon, you couldn't get any better staff than that. They are just so conscientious, so willing to help people and they will go to any means to try to get an answer or resolve an issue. You know, they can't always do what the, what the person wants them to do because there are laws, there are regulations that govern a lot of things, but they will try their best to do whatever they can to help. I want to thank you again for taking the time to speak with us on this project. I wish you all the luck and success in the next you. chapter of your life. Thank you. It's a pleasure.